Welcome to The Know, I'm Ashley Jenkins. Forget that PlayStation VR is, technically speaking, inferior in virtually every category to its souped up VR counterparts on PC. That's not gonna stop Time Magazine from honoring it as one of the best inventions of 2016. In their annual list of 25 of the best inventions of the year, Time honors the PlayStation VR for innovatively bringing the high-end VR to a more casual audience, thanks to its approachable price point. The big piece of plastic you pay 400 bucks to strap to your face is joined on the list by the likes of floating light bulbs, tires that spin in every direction, and all-purpose temporary shelters. So, that all makes sense. Jokes aside, the PlayStation VR is reportedly selling very, very well at retail. Sony's indicated it's already sold hundreds of thousands of units. We know it moved 50,000 in Japan alone. It's launch week, putting it most likely ahead of HTC Vive and Oculus Rift probably combined. If you recall earlier this year, we reported that they were having trouble even breaking 100,000 in their install base. So, hey, maybe time's onto something after all. If you're still holding on to Uncharted 4 all these months later, you're in luck. Naughty Dog just announced that the game will be getting a brand new free co-op horde mode. Uncharted 4 Survival is a new three-player mode that pits you and two friends against waves of enemies. It plays out like standard horde modes, 50 waves total with a boss coming at you every 10. However, Naughty Dog seems to have thrown some twists on the formula. Every now and then the rules will change, requiring you and your teammates to defend different portions of the map, collect treasure within a time limit, or only use particular types of weapons. Survival will also feature its own progression and ranking system, plus brand new enemy types and never before seen bosses. Survival launches mid-December, but if you're just itching to play it, you could always attend PSX next week and get hands-on with it early. <laughs> Gotta scan them all if you're needing some help filling out your Pokedex in Sun and Moon, and let's be honest, who doesn't need a little bit of help? Some generous trainers with maybe a little bit too much time on their hands have made your life a little easier. For those of you who aren't familiar with the game's QR feature, Sun and Moon allows you to scan QR codes thanks to the 3DS camera, and every Pokemon has their own code. Scanning a Pokemon's QR code will fill out their entry in your Pokedex. For every 10 you scan, you'll be clued in to the location of a rare Pokemon on the island you're currently exploring. Naturally, the QR codes for every single Pokemon in Sun and Moon, including shiny forms, have made their way over to Imgur because of course they have. So you can start scanning and catching to your heart's content. Remember though, you can only scan 10 per day, so don't muck it up all at once or all this hard work will, will be for naught. And it's probably a good idea to have the entire island open for you to get to. Otherwise, there's a chance that it's good, the rare Pokemon will spawn in an area that you can't get to yet, and then you're boned. And then you gotta play the game for real. <laughs> like a loser. An unannounced Blizzard project may have just leaked thanks to some new job postings on the company's US careers page. Blizzard is currently seeking lead software engineers to work on an unannounced project that utilizes a robust first-person engine and prefers candidates with previous experience working on first person or other action oriented games. Oh, come on, are you gonna try and make StarCraft Ghost a thing again? You gonna do it? You gonna do it? Maybe, possibly, we can hope, probably not. Typically, Blizzard's job postings fall under the IP they're hiring for, even if it's an unannounced project. For instance, they've been posting quite a bit about unannounced projects set in the Diablo universe, so it stands to reason we're looking at a brand new IP here and possibly even a brand new type of game from Blizzard altogether, which means, all of you hoping for an Overwatch story campaign or that resurrection of StarCraft Ghost should probably just calm down a little bit. There is, of course, a huge wish list of first person games. It would be really cool to see Blizzard tackle like a first person fantasy series similar to Elder Scrolls, for instance, just throwing that out there. But we've been overhyped by Blizzard job postings before. Everyone thought those Diablo positions were gonna lead to the announcement of Diablo 4 at BlizzCon this year, remember? But that announcement turned out to be nothing more than Diablo 1 in Diablo 3. But Keep dreaming, right? Right. The new Harry Potter movie is proving to be a fairly fantastic beast at the box office. The debut of the new prequel, Pentology, from J.K. Rowling dominated the weekend, pulling in $75 million domestically and bringing the total to close to $220 million worldwide. While Warner Brothers is doing some public back padding, of course, other industry insiders are wondering if those numbers are maybe a little bit disappointing internally. Not only is it a worse opening than other recent franchise blockbusters like Doctor Strange, which made 80 
55 million in its first weekend domestically, and Suicide Squad, which, love it or hate it, I don't know, a lot of people hated it, made $133 million domestically its opening weekend. It's also the worst weekend opener of any Harry Potter film. Some are saying that with its budget of $180 million, Fantastic Beasts Target was more than likely somewhere closer to $90 million for its first weekend, which would have put it on par with the first Harry Potter film, Sorcerer's Stone. However, it is possible that word of mouth, thanks to the movie's rave reviews and the upcoming holiday season, might give Fantastic Beasts a magical second weekend, as soon as all the tryptophan wears off and we wake up from our turkey. Now, Stevens Warner Brothers might not be the only studio in town looking to capitalize on tracking down larger-than-life creatures. Oh no! Deadline reports that Paul W.S. Anderson, the man behind 1995's Mortal Kombat film, amazing, and more famously, the ongoing Resident Evil theatrical series, less amazing, is now shopping a new Capcom franchise to the bigwigs of Hollywood in the form of a Monster Hunter cinematic universe. At the moment, Anderson has two films planned in the series and views Capcom's best-selling IP as having the same appeal as the Star Wars or Marvel universes. Just let that sink in for a second. As to what the movie version would tackle, the synopsis reads, an ordinary man in a dead-end job discovers that he is actually the descendant of an ancient hero. He must travel to a mystical world to train to become a monster hunter before the mythical creatures from that world destroy ours. So basically, it's like Pacific Rim 3. See what you will about Anderson and his Resident Evil films. They have put butts in seats. I, I stopped watching them ages ago. Other people did not. They've totaled nearly a billion dollars at the box office on reasonably modest production budgets, with each one making more money than the last. The next film in the series, the final chapter, which will hopefully remain the final chapter, releases in January. Now, we've got even more leaks about Nintendo Switch's potential launch window lineup once again coming from the almighty Laura Dale, the Let's Play video games writer who's been leaking pretty much everything about the console. Dale posted a new tweet over the weekend summing up everything she knows about Switch's first six months of games, which had a couple of surprises. In addition to recapping 3D Mario, Mario RPG, Skyrim, and ports of Mario Maker, Splatoon, and Mario Kart 8, the list also includes a Switch port of Xenoblade Chronicles X, giving gamers who skipped out on the Wii U yet another reason to Switch. <gasps> yeah. I, I did that. Uh, well, also on the list is Pikmin 4, which according to Dale will now be a total reboot of the franchise simply titled Pikmin, although I'm not sure we needed that yet. As well as news that Telltale's recently leaked Guardians of the Galaxy game will also be part of the launch window lineup. On Twitter, Dale gave a few more details about Guardians of the Galaxy in particular, writing that Telltale wants the game out ahead of the movie as the game's episodes that lead up to the start of the film. However, the voice actor strike seems to be affecting development at the moment, so that may change the timeline. If you can't get your voice actors, you're gonna have a bad time. Now, we've already had a number of roundups of some of the best Black Friday deals you can get your hands on. Two, in fact, but we thought we'd throw one more into this roundup because it's especially good for those of you who want a cheaper way into virtual reality. If you've had your eyes set on HTC Vive as your headset of choice, both Amazon and HTC will be offering it for $100 off while supplies last throughout the weekend and on Cyber Monday. That still makes the Vive a pricey $699 after the discount, but when you're dropping that much money to get room scale VR, just about anything helps, and it is 100 bucks. You can afford a 3DS with that, so you're welcome for the heads up. What do you guys think of all the stories in today's roundup? Let us know in the comments, and for more news from every corner of the internet, like this video and subscribe to the now. I wonder if we'll be able to use the blurry version for the end card because it'll be tiny. Oh, but it won't be tiny on the website. Fuck you, autofocus. I'm pretty sure we said some clever things. What did we even talk about? We talked about a lot of stuff. Actually. We talked about so much stuff. We talked about the Kickstarter for the underwear yep. so you can shit yourself if you want to. I mean, and really, why wouldn't you?